Hi, I'm Craig Sigal, the mental toughness trainer for youth sports. I've got my list of the top nine must-haves for kids in sports to be successful. As parents and coaches, there's some simple but critical things that you can do for your kids in sports that'll make a huge difference in their happiness and their performances. Number one, encouragement. Now I put encouragement first because this is by far the most important need of any kid participating in sports. You cannot overdo encouragement. See, the problems start when parents and coaches give praise only after good performances, and they call that encouragement. Now, all that does is give the child the idea that your acceptance and approval, it only comes from a good performance. What parents need to do is simply express their joy and their excitement about watching their athlete play their sport. For example, instead of saying, way to hit that home run, what would be more encouraging would be to say something like, I love the confidence I saw in you when you were up there in the batter's box taking that swing. Notice that you can say that last sentence even if your kid struck out. Number two, it's not about the winning. The first question to ask yourself is, why do you want your kid to play sports anyway? Well, most parents and coaches agree that it's for them to have fun and build life skills. And your kids can accomplish these two things whether they win or not. And there's a case to be made for learning more from losing than winning. Number three, good nutrition. Unfortunately, this is one of the most ignored areas of youth sports. Your kids are out there moving their body, they're sweating. It's extremely important to keep them hydrated with water, not those fluorescent sports drinks. Also, avoiding sugary snacks that spike their blood sugar, then bring them crashing down. Number four, sleep well. It's very easy for parents of kids playing sports to ignore this because there's only so many hours in a day. And they also have homework, family chores, obligations, etc. They're so worried and stressed out about keeping up their studies and giving their all to their sport, they often have trouble sleeping or cut it short to find some time in the day. Kids need to wind down at night and have a regularly scheduled bedtime. Number five, acceptance among peers. This is a biggie. While you can't make all of your kids' teammates like them, you can check in to find out how well he's fitting in with his team or his group. Some coaches pit players against each other. But studies show that everyone does better when there's team harmony. This is especially important when working with girls teams. Bullying this is also very prevalent in youth sports. And there should be a no tolerance policy on your kid's team. It's a big reason why kids quit sports. Number six, respect their opinion. Just because you played or know something about your kid's sport does not mean that you know the best way to help him become a better player. You are not your kid. You know? You know you're on the wrong track with helping your kid when you think to yourself, well, it worked for me. In my free ebook, The Ten Commandments for a Great Sports Parent, I teach parents a number of effective ways to give advice. And it starts with asking if they even want your advice and respecting a no answer if that's what they give you. And if you go past that, you're only hurting your relationship and ultimately his or her confidence and performance. Number seven, to be taught and shown physical skills. You know, there's approximately three million youth sports coaches out there. Less than 20% of these coaches have any training whatsoever, all, whatsoever at all to be a coach. 85% of all coaches are the parent of one of the players. In other words, do not assume they're getting good skill instruction. It's up to you to make sure this is happening. Take a keen interest in what your child is learning by asking them about their latest skill. Really be present in these conversations. Ask open-ended questions and keep it going. When some kids get the personal instruction and others don't, it creates a formula for destroying confidence. Number eight. You need to get mental skills explained and modeled to them. Now, my definition of mental toughness is when you are focused, confident, 
determined, and resilient, especially under pressure. And I have an eight-step program in our Mental Toughness Academy to help your child develop these mental skills. But it's your job, though, to model them. For example, if you want your child to learn sportsmanship, you better be a great sports parent from the stands. You can model this by clapping at appropriate times for other competitors and, and keeping quiet when there's bad officials' calls. If you want your kid to be calm under pressure, you better be showing him how to do that at your home. Modeling, this is the most powerful way that kids learn anything. Nine, advocate for them. Back them up, support them. You know, most youth sports programs are well run. Most coaches are well intentioned. Unfortunately, sometimes things fall apart and, and it's the parent's job to step in or, or pull the plug when the young athlete's sports participation is tilting toward the negative. Always remember when approaching the coach to present your concerns with the utmost respect for another human being is, who is doing their best. I want to tell you about a fabulous technique that I've taught a lot of parents at confronting a coach or, or a director, and I call it the feedback sandwich. Now, this means you start out the conversation with praise, followed by your concern, and then you finish it up with more praise. All right, this works like magic. Here's how it would go. Hi, coach. I just want to tell you how much I appreciate all your efforts and the time you put in for this team. I'm very grateful for all you do for these kids. Now, I wonder if I might just uh, ask you a little bit about Johnny's playing time and what you think he needs to do in order to get more time on the field. Oh, and by the way, that last game where you pumped the team up to get that win, it was brilliant. Then just be quiet and let the coach speak. These are my top nine tips. There's much more in our Mental Toughness Academy. Put your name in the email below and we'll give you all sorts of free mental training for coaches, parents, and athletes. I'm Craig Sickle.